Hi, I'm Luke Serveld. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Alan Steinheimer and I had the opportunity to go down to Aerie in Burbank to check out the new Orbiter. I just want to set expectations. This is not an in-depth review. Uh, we did not have the opportunity to compare it with other units like an M8. This is just an opportunity for us to get hands-on with the unit. That's it. All right. With that said, here we go. Hey, the way. All right, come on in. Dying to see the uh, new orbiter. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty spectacular. A lot of buzz about this in the Bay Area. Oh, good. Rumors flying. Good, good. So here it is. Cool. And I understand it's the inline switch. Yes. But uh, and roughly 500 watts. Yeah. The light engine itself is four, but. Uh, you also have nice, you have power con through as well, so you can daisy chain okay. fixtures together in that way. And then this is one of the open face uh, lenses on it, the yeah. 30. And then this is anything to release. Yeah, release. This, I mean, it's real easy. Just push that in, a little, a little bit okay. of a turn. And it's like super light. Yeah, and you can see the little key right there. Yeah, that little okay. pin is a way to line it up. It's like at uh, 630. Just okay. like that. And are they gonna are you gonna manufacture something that drops in at some yeah, point? Yeah, basically or? this is for barn doors. Okay. If you want to put barn doors on it or uh, so you, you can know, have for some like reason little you want gel frames or yeah. something like that. Right. Uh, you wouldn't need color obviously, but yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's primarily for barn doors at this point. Right, right. All right, cool. And then it looks very much like the the airy one. Yeah, the interface looks a lot like uh, the stellar Intensity. interface. Or being sort of a bit of a parish kind of thing. Our temperature all the way at 20,000, down to 2,000. Can't say that I've ever actually seen that. So, mm -hmm. uh, green magenta. And then HSI. You, it's got that logarithmic. Is that also adjustable like that? Uh, it's accelerating, thing? basically. If you turn it fast, it'll go mm -hmm. faster. Mm -hmm. uh, something to note as well is you've got the you've got some preset buttons here. Short click will increase it. Uh, but if you look at the top, oh, short right? click, okay. short click, okay. and then long click will actually hold down will actually bring it to the number on the bottom. Okay, which is an easier way to get around. Okay. And uh, I don't know if the camera can see it, but there's actually a little tiny circle there. It's actually indicating where you are in the color wheel, the HSI mm -hmm. color wheel. So I'm going to go back to saturation so you can see it a little, little bit. There you see it. Yeah, there's the... Uh, and then... Uh, so the, the, the tendency of the fr at the beginning is to want to touch because we're so used to iPads and the rest and so many touch screens, but everything's pretty much... Uh, some kind of combo of the sky panel, it seems like, and the, and the Stellar, as you're saying, uh, where you're basically using this to navigate to a large degree. And then done, and back to intensity. And when you're in intensity mode as well, you can actually just click it, and it'll, you can see it'll black out. So you've got that oh. option as well. Oh, that's slick. So Heidi and oh, it's just a uh, okay. It's a little red eye. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then back to mode. And the RB. Uh, and this. Uh, what are the colors again? Here? Red, green, blue, amber, cyan, lime. So it's okay. a six-color light engine now. Okay. I guess you can put some limes in your advertising, huh? <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Gives you a little bit wider gamut, and it kind of helps the amber and the lime help a little bit with uh, flesh tones as well. It's also going to work with the uh, extended color control in this as well. So you can start with one of the gels they have in the library, and then you can do the little fine tuning like you can on the sky panel somewhere. Oh, so they just put a little L in front of it so that you're reminded that it's actually in Lee. Mm -hmm. Can you do the thing where you change the base uh, CCT underneath the gel? Sure. Okay. Oh, Here's okay. the base CCT, short press. 
Okay, so now instead of just having the two options of 3,256 under gel mode, you can wherever. set your gel anywhere uh, in the correlated space okay. that we have for color temperature. Okay. So you can be laying a gel over anything from 2,000 all the way up to uh, 20,000. Yes, crazy okay. talk. <laughs> yeah, we all love the gels. Yeah, so she tried different, uh, looks like we blacked out. Mm -hmm. A different lens. So this is the 30 we were looking at, uh, sort of the in between. Which would you like? 60 uh, to 50? Let's try the wide. Huh? Okay. And again, as you look at it, you can see that these little there's a sensor in here. Uh, the fixture will know what uh, ah. optic is attached to it. So there's okay. a little chip in each one of those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Little keyway there that uh, goes in about 6:30. Snap in. So select which one you want, which uh, feature you want. There you go. And that'll activate the mouth. And then if you tilt up a little. Should we turn the overheads down a little bit? Would that be helpful? No, that's okay. okay. Yeah. We're, we're all the way down to 2000. Right. Okay. So nice and wide. Six. That is darn wide. That is no, 60 good. degrees, but I would call it like super wide, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, blackout. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah, you just hold. You can it do in it in both. Moment. If you're in intensity, if you hit it twice, it'll get to that mode as well. Looks like a big boy, but it's. Is yeah, it, it is so light. I mean, it's, I don't know what it is. It couldn't be more than a pound or two. Mm -hmm. All right, and there's our, so that's our narrow 15 degree par equivalent lens. Open face, I guess, is what the nomenclature says on, on the lens. I'm not sure where people are going to land on that, but probably open face. They call best it open face. Best describes it. Yeah, in that it's, sense. they've got the same reflector, faceted reflector as the M series. Basically, is how they're shaping the beam as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. So, and there's a you know, little bit of the hot spot in the middle, uh, like all the par lights. Probably a little more even than uh, the HMI par series. So, um, should we bring the card in? Yeah. Take a look at that. This would be. Uh, the way we use Joe Lico's and uh, and LED Lico's now, pretty typical. And two two tightening handles on it, uh, fairly hefty too. And are they? Looks like they're the oh yeah, they're the reset type, so you can yeah, you can straighten out your handle. If you want. All right, seems like a lot of light. The one other test I wanted to do real quick is the sort of feel out the weight of it. Uh, maybe we'll just turn it off here for a second. Um, all right, so there's a Got snap a on either side. Yeah, your side. Yep. All right. So not quite as heavy as uh, everyone was saying 45 pounds. It doesn't feel that heavy. 33, I think they're saying. It's like yeah. 13, 14 yeah. kilograms. <laughs> okay. And. Uh, I guess I was looking at that, oh, I was thinking originally maybe this will fit in a milk crate, but now that I see all the accessories, like, that's probably not going to happen, so, I mean, you could probably get this in a milk crate, but uh, um, I'm not sure where the bale would go at that point anyway, so I suppose it's all, does this come off then to get it into the case, or? Yeah, it depends, like, it depends, like this, uh, the particular case we have with it now, it'll ship separate, uh -huh. so it's just an easy, a quick release, so you can, if you're packing in the case, you can have uh, the yolk separate because they're going to be making other yolks where you can have an array of like four fixtures. Oh, so you've got okay. a nice big beefy yeah, source. Like a maxi uh, orbiter kind of arrangement. Yeah, okay. Sure, yeah. okay. Well, you know, initial thoughts are uh, uh, it, you know, has all the advantages of an LED um, in the sense of the uh, control, you know, plus, you know, perhaps a higher CRI. Uh, rating and um, you know even the CRI would seem to be adjustable in terms of a higher color rendering thing um, indicator on here. Um, there's also a low noise output uh, mode. Um, 
I, the low noise, I can just barely hear the fan at all. Um, in the high output, it's it's slightly noticeable. So I suppose if you were right next to talent on set, that you know you might want to be thinking about low noise. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, sort of an exciting uh, addition to you know the whole LED line in the sense that it's really sort of breaking new ground uh, for a way to harness the, the LEDs and be more of a focused beam uh, kind of thing. So um, of course. A little bit more GAC with the, as you can see from the case, uh, you're going to be carrying lenses around now and interchanging them, but uh, at least thankfully they're all lightweight, uh, not heavy at all, and um, it looks like you could, you could probably have your PA uh, drop this and not uh, have it totally wrecked. Uh, so. Um, we don't encourage that. Yeah, no, I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't encourage dropping, but. Uh, uh, and then the menu seems vastly expanded, and it, 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 it took me a moment, I kept wanting to use it as a touch screen, uh, but it does seem a little easier to use actually than the Sky Panel 1. Um, at least, we're having the four buttons down below, they seem to, or four? Five. Five buttons down below, they seem to have divvied up some of the uh, functions into the uh, uh, the buttons down below, so I'm not having to hit this uh, multiple times, um, which is sort of nice. Uh, it'll take a little getting used to, but it feels a little a little easier than the Sky Panel one, even. Okay, uh, that's it. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I wish there was more to show. Oh, I did shoot some footage. It just wasn't that great of the sort of um, ellipsoidal front but it's not like they were separate lenses for it. It was just a cuttable circle. The fringing doesn't look too bad. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the, um, this is the, I believe they're gonna call this a projection lens, but you could basically describe it as a Leco-like lens uh, going in front of the light. Uh, it's got the traditional four blades, you can see it. Uh, and then it's got um, the focusing, so you can try and sharpen your your blades up as much as possible. But what I'm sort of liking about it a lot is that uh, it gives us a very uh, contained, so that I uh, pretty much don't need a barn door or anything, uh, contained kind of bounce. Uh, a lot of times when we're bouncing these things, we're using Jolico's and we're using LED Leco's because uh, the precision and it's just that much less GAC I have to have around the light. So uh, this might be a, might be one of my favorite lenses. We'll see. But I think those accessories will still change before we get the production model, and you know that'll come. We'll we'll be able to uh, play with it uh, when it comes out. But you know I went down with sort of reduced expectations. I was kind of wondering like, okay, where is this going to fit into my world? What is it going to replace? And being down there and having an opportunity to sort of hold it in my hands, you know, I'm like, oh, this isn't that bad. I thought it was going to be heavier. Uh, the lenses aren't really lenses. They're sort of like cones. So they were super light as well. Um, but, you know, I still have to think, okay, it's got all these wonderful capabilities, LED, uh, you know, tunable, RGB, dimmable, um, networkable. I mean, it's, it's got all that going for it, but when it comes down to it, where does it fit? If it's sort of in between a sort of a 400 and an 800 HMI, you know, because a 400 Joker is still more compact and, uh, and cheaper, you know, to rent. So as a smaller owner operator like myself, I got to figure out, does this fit in my world? And, you know, just like the sky panel, Hey, it was, when it came out, it was expensive. It uh, had RGB. Everybody's like, you know, what, who needs that? Right. <laughs> and you may still be thinking that, but it has changed the shape of the industry and it's the workhorse now and so but we're in a different world and so the orbiter has come into that 
and it's kind of following on the legacy of sort of the Joker line that creates this uh, small unit that can put you can put all kinds of accessories on it. And then Aperture came out with the first LED version of that, in a sense. You can put all kinds of fronts on it. But like uh, an HMI, it's daylight only. So now we have the full-blown color version, 400 watts, but is the output there? And so you don't always need that output, but if you're gonna replace something on your shelf, it, it comes into the conversation. And so, you know, for the output, for the cost, for the capabilities, you're needing to weigh these things. We'll learn more as we go down the road, uh, as this actually rolls out. But um, so yeah, uh, kind of mixed emotions at the moment. Uh, I think it's an exciting unit in many ways, and it also raises questions. So we'll learn more soon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Right. And then if we, uh, could we connect this guy? Sure. So let's pull that handheld out. You want to oh, yeah. record that? Um, yeah, so if you come around here. Yeah, let me uh, put it back in first so it's active and you can see. Okay, so what we're going to do here is you have the onboard controls, but that can actually slide out and it becomes a handheld remote control. Okay, Let's, so it's in. It goes into the right, yeah, I think. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. And then you kind of correct go yeah. to the left uh -huh. and pop it out and then it's got a little case on it put this yeah. guy is that in? 15 foot usb cable again or um this no. is a, what a fisher connector right so this is a then, am i correct i think it's a fisher connector if i'm not mistaken I should just i should be able to just feel it right it's got the pins on it yeah there you go and then this guy and those funny things And then does it have the... Uh, of nice. course. It's magnetized, nice. yep. And Even through the case. And now you're... Uh, it's not touch screen. Oh, that's right. So uh, yeah. You'll either, you know, click the one you want here, like CCT mode. And mm -hmm. then you'll, you're will you immediately going to default to intensity. Mm -hmm. However, so if you uh, select that again, or whichever one you want, Boom. then you hit CCT. And then it'll you'll have and your control. Yeah. yeah.